it's 11 o'clock, so. The, the official AT&T times is 11 o'clock. <laughs> well, uh, welcome. Uh, my name is Roger Steiner, and uh, the topic that uh, I'm going to be addressing is why we have a ConfoScan uh, confocal microscope in our practice and, and why I think it's very useful in a corneal practice. Uh, the, so first I, I'd like to just show you some uh, pictures of normal I, and I, I don't know because I don't know who's seen what or who knows what so we'll just very quickly touch on what some normal is and then we'll I'll go over some interesting cases that are just representative of um, like, is, this, is this working by the way can you hear me um, no <laughs> probably better without it uh, it, some representative cases of uh, the most common applications. The number of things you can use it for is almost infinite, but uh, there are some common ones. So, let's start uh, first with endothelium. As you can see here, you get very, very pretty uh, endothelial photographs, very sharp. Uh, the ConfaScan actually comes with a contact and a non-contact lens. Uh, the, if there's any question of uh, a problem with the cornea itself, I prefer the contact. Now the contact uses a fluid bridge. It actually isn't, strictly speaking, in touch with the cornea. You use, we use a, um, a genteel gel as the bridge, but, uh, but it, it, it is very, very close. The non-contact is obviously faster, it's easier, it's further away, and it works great if you have a nice, clear, normal cornea. But if you don't, it's tougher to get an image, just the same is true with any specular microscope. So uh, this is, in any case, what the normal endothelium will look like. You can see that you can visualize some of the nuclei. And there is a, I didn't have the sophistication to figure out how to capture it without taking photographs of the screen itself, but they have a very elegant uh, cell counting mechanism in there. So once you capture these, you go into the software and there's a wizard basically, and it will find, it, it draws out, it finds all the cells, it outlines the borders, and then it will calculate not only cell density, but the polymegathism and pleomorphism, and pop it out and tell you whether it's in the normal range, the abnormal range, and, and also it's actually, it's, it's quite uh, elegant uh, as a way of doing your endothelial cell counts. Uh, this is uh, stroma, uh, actually this is fairly deep stroma, uh, so you can see there are some keratocytes there, um, and that's what, what these guys are, they're normal keratocytes. So that's a very normal appearing uh, deep stroma. Uh, this is basal epithelium, and you can tell that because we're actually getting a little bit of Bowman's here and then transitioning into the basal epithelium. You see fairly large cells. It also, also can pick up, there's a, a part of a nerve uh, right there sitting uh, right underneath the uh, epithelium. And then uh, more superficial epithelium as you come up and you see some large desquamating cells uh, right on the surface uh, that are losing nuclei. There's, here's one that still has a nucleus that's getting big. So, uh, and again, this one's a little bit, I picked this one because it has a, a, it's at a slight angle so you're seeing several different depths uh, from the very surface of the tear film down into probably uh, one or two cells down on the epithelium. So uh, people do use confocal for doing tear film analyses and, and studies of that as well, and it's a, a very elegant way to do that. The non-contact, of course, is the preferred way. This, this actually is a contact picture. Uh, the non-contact uh, won't in induce any artifact, whereas the genteel gel that I was using here in principle could uh, disturb the tear film. So if you were doing a tear film study, you'd use the non-contact lens. Um, I just threw this in to uh, make the point that one of the, the uh, challenges with confocal microscopy is that you do see things that you don't know what they are. Um, and now, one of the world's experts is sitting right here, so I don't know, I, but you know, I captured this. It's, it's, we're sitting up on the epithelium. You can see it there. I think it's a multinucleated giant cell, but I'm not sure. Um, what would you think it is? Anybody? What do you think, Larry? What, giant cell? Yeah, I mean, yeah, yeah, I mean, you do get this stuff. The other thing you get uh, frequently, and it's, it's been well known in both LASIK and PRK, you get these small, very bright objects. And, they're, and I don't think anybody's ever figured out what those things are either. Do you have any thoughts on that, Larry?
Yeah. Yeah, you know, if with LASIK, you think, okay, well, it's just stuff in the interface, but, but I've seen it in PRK, too, so it's, uh, it's a little odd, but um, it's as good a guess as anything, I guess. Yeah, but I'm trying to, you know, like the little pin, almost pinhead size. Oh, okay. Did you hear that? That those, the uh, collapsed nuclei might be the explanation of where they was it coming from. That would, that would explain why they're there in PRK as well. So, all right. I don't have any pictures of that, but they're, they're somewhat like some of this stuff that you're seeing here and, and here. But you see it down in the stroma. Um, so this is the first uh, case that I wanted to show, and this one actually has just came in last week. Uh, patient sent in. This is, you can tell it's pseudophagic. And the question was, what is going on here? So this is a you slit, you see there's a lot of reflection going on, and then this is high mag uh, slit lamp photo of the same area. Now, what I have to describe, because you can't tell from these photos, is it had a f somewhat, not super sharply demarcated edge, but definitely something of a margin. The area more temporally looked completely normal. So it had almost a it really wasn't a plaque in the sense of a very sharp edge, but still it was very, it was center and especially nasal to center. This was a left eye, had this funny looking appearance. So, you know, so we're all, uh, the fellows are looking at it, I'm looking at it, we're scratching our heads. I can't remember ever seeing anything quite like this. Uh, so I said, well, let, let's do a confocal and, and see. Well, that's, <laughs> that's what we got. Uh, in other words, it, well, the only conclusion I could really come up with is uh, that one of the fellows said, well, maybe it's posterior polymorphous dystrophy. But uh, one strong argument against that uh, coming out of the box was it was unilateral. We scoured the other eye and could not find anything in the other eye. No snail tracks, nothing. Well, you know, I mean, I don't know how long, if the capsule stayed there long enough. It certainly didn't have any glassy membrane edge anywhere. But um, you know, I didn't know if it was direct trauma. In any case, uh, the, the, what we saw is, you, uh, I scanned it a whole bunch of times. This is just obviously one photo. Um, what you don't know is when you do one of these and if you let it run, you get about 300 photos and you, you go through them all looking for things. And uh, the, the only, the, what we drew as a conclusion is that it was very ref reflective, which we knew anyway from the slit lamp photo, but more importantly, there was no endothelium wherever that was. And the piece of this puzzle that I haven't told you is it was 700 microns thick over this area, which is consistent with, so whatever it was, there was no endothelium there. Um, so we, we at least could come to that conclusion. Um, this is another uh, and the last of the endothelial uh, studies that I, I just wanted to show. And this was one uh, about a month ago. We had a patient who had had a DSEC and it was, uh, we had to go back for an, an intraocular lens. Well, actually, yeah, we were going back for an intraocular lens uh, exchange and, uh, and stabilization. We looked at this, so we said, well, I don't know. This, I wasn't, clinically, I didn't think it looked like the world's most compact and pristine DSEC, but I wasn't sure. Uh, we couldn't get any visualization of the endothelium with a non-contact specular microscope, so we did the contact uh, 40x lens, and this is what the and this, believe it or not, is endothelium on the DSEC button. So you can see huge cells, massive loss of the normal um, hexagonal pattern. Uh, so lots of different sizes, very unhappy-looking cells. You see some large nuclei. And uh, so the decision, this, this made us say, okay, forget it. This is not going to survive in the long run. And we, we did a repeat DSEC at the same time that we were in there based on this, even though there was no gross edema uh, at that point. Um, this is uh, stroma uh, of a case of infectious keratitis. And this is an edema area next to the infiltrate. And you know, we seem to commonly see these, these kind of linear structures. I don't know whether it's the edema pushing apart the collagen that's causing 